Hey guys, it's Kaylee, and welcome back to Hippie in a Suit, where I talk about sustainability because I dream of a world where the education system creates critical thinkers and not just people who can spit out information for a test. Yay! Hi, hi, hi! I'm back, and I'm sorry it has been a little while. It has been an absolutely chaotic month at work, and it's made it really hard to find the time to research and write a video. But we're here today, we're back, and we're diving into another video in my SDG series where I explain each of the 17 sustainable development goals. If you haven't already watched my primer on the SDGs, I do recommend checking that out first so that you understand the overall framework. Today we're zooming in on SDG 4, which is quality education, and I'm really looking forward to this one because education is something a lot of us, myself included, do take for granted, but it is not available to everyone and it is such a fundamental building block for a good life. So let's get going and dive into SDG 4, quality education. Education is a crucial SDG because it enables upward socioeconomic mobility and is a key part of escaping poverty. It is the absolute basis and foundation for acquiring decent work, which in turn provides almost all basic necessities. SDG 4 covers multiple dimensions of education, training, and development from birth to death, or as you might hear it called often, lifelong learning. It is made up of 10 targets, and within them, I generally noticed a few big themes that came up over and over again. First, accessibility, which is how difficult or easy it is to obtain an education, including eliminating barriers that may prevent access such as cost, location, or socioeconomic conditions. The second dimension I noticed is equity, which looks more at who is able to access the education system, in particular ensuring that marginalized groups have the support they need for access and participation. Next is quality, and this dimension really says it's not enough to simply access education or make it available. The system needs to be of adequate quality in order to ensure that people get the skills and knowledge they need to participate in society and make a good life for themselves. Ultimately, education is a means to a larger end and a very important one at that. So let's take a closer look at each of the targets in this goal. Target 4.1. By 2030, ensure that all girls and boys complete free, equitable, quality, primary and secondary education leading to relevant and effective learning outcomes. To begin to understand this target, a good place to start is looking at how it's measured, which in this case is the proportion of children with minimum levels of reading and math comprehension at different stages of their educational journeys. This is an outcome-focused measurement, or a measurement that's focused on the result we want to see, but it is a little bit simplistic and there's a lot more wrapped up in this definition, so let's break down a few keywords in the target. First one is primary and secondary education. What exactly is that? Effectively, it's grades 1 to 12 or the school that children attend from ages 6 to 18. I note this because the exact grade labels do really vary a lot depending on the country, so it's easier just to think of it as the education that children get during those years. This target says that all 12 years of education should be offered and the first nine should be compulsory. Primary refers to children ages 6 to 12, and secondary is for children ages 13 to 18. The next word I want to highlight is complete. This is getting at the fact that it's not enough for education to just be available. Success is based on how many children actually finish their primary and secondary education. In other words, just getting them in a seat is not enough. There needs to be a focus on getting them that diploma at the end. Free is another crucial word here. Specifically, this means that 12 years of education should be free for children and publicly funded, as in funded by the government. Equitable, I mentioned this at the top, but it will come up over and over again because SDG 4 really wants to ensure that all children have access to quality education regardless of their gender, their race, their ethnicity, socioeconomic status, location, and any other factors. And finally, the word quality. While the measurement of this target uses numeracy and literacy as a proxy, there's a general understanding that quality goes beyond just those two things. A more complete definition would be one that focuses on the social, emotional, mental, physical, and cognitive development of children, and that gives them the skills and capabilities they need to have a good life. 
So where do we currently stand on children in primary and secondary education? As I'm sure you can imagine, the numbers of children out of school go up with each level of education. And what I mean by that is that a large number of children start in school and over the years, for a wide number of reasons, those numbers do tend to decrease, particularly by the time children hit high school. Globally, we have made really good progress on reducing the number of children who are out of school. However, projections before the pandemic predicted that more than 200 million children would still be out of school and only 60% of young people would complete their upper secondary education by 2030. These projections, of course, will surely be impacted by the massive school closures we've experienced during the pandemic as well, so it could be even worse. The easiest way to see children out of school is to look at this chart by UNESCO. What you'll see here is that for primary education, the number of out-of-school children fell from 99.7 million in 2000 to 59.1 million in 2018. This represents a primary school completion rate of about 84% in 2018, when it was only 70% in 2000, and it is projected to be around 89% globally by 2030. For lower secondary education, the number of out-of-school children fell from 98.7 million in 2000 to 61.5 million in 2018. And for upper secondary, out-of-school children fell from 177.1 million in 2000 to 137.8 million in 2018. That means that today we have approximately 258.4 million children out of school, which is down from 375.5 million in 2000. I know that's a lot of numbers, but that's why the chart is helpful. Now, if we look at literacy and numeracy rates, what we will see is that in 2015, an estimated 617 million or 55% of school children in primary and lower secondary school globally lacked minimum proficiency in reading and mathematics. According to UN statistics, one third of these children were out of school and two thirds actually did attend but did not become proficient. Despite years of steady growth in enrollment rates, non-proficiency rates remain disturbingly high. In this realm, there are also worrying localized trends. For example, in Sub-Saharan Africa, 88% of children at the ages of primary and lower secondary school were not proficient in reading and 84% were not proficient in math. Target 4.2. By 2030, ensure that all girls and boys have access to quality early childhood development, care, and pre-primary education so that they are ready for primary education. This target looks at early childhood education and development, which encompasses the physical, social, emotional, and cognitive growth of a child from birth to approximately age five. It is an incredibly important period for every person's life as it is foundational to so many other aspects of growth and development. According to UNICEF, during the first few years of life, more than 1 million neural connections are formed every second, a pace that is never repeated again in all of our lifetimes. Early childhood development and education encompasses many aspects, including nurturing care, good health, optimal nutrition, and a stimulating and safe environment for all-around development and learning. But for the purposes of this SDG target, it is measured by two important aspects. The percentage of children under five who are developmentally on track in at least three of the four following areas, literacy, numeracy, physical, social, emotional, and learning and enrollment rates in pre-primary education. And the standard that countries strive for here is that there's at least one free year of education that's compulsory and quality before primary school, which for many of us, we would know as like kindergarten. So where are we on this particular target? Well, according to UN stats, the participation rate in early childhood education has been steadily increasing. It was 69% in 2017, but that was up from 63% in 2010. However, disparities do remain based on the socioeconomic conditions in a country. For example, pre-primary education participation rates were only 43% in least developed countries. Measuring if a child is developmentally on track is a little bit more complicated, but comparative data from 74 countries did find that 7 out of 10 children are developmentally on track globally. Target 4.3 
By 2030, ensure equal access for all women and men to affordable and quality technical, vocational, and tertiary education, including university. Now, this target aims to reduce barriers, including cost, to higher education, which is education that happens after your compulsory primary and secondary education. It also has a provision for lifelong learning. The terms technical, vocational, and tertiary training are often used interchangeably or in overlapping ways, but ultimately there's kind of two big categories. Technical or vocational training is usually training for a very specific skill. This would be things like trades, cooking, very specific technical jobs and technicians. And then you have what would be called tertiary education, which is more the academic space we think of, like colleges and universities. So more following an academic skill set versus trying to get into a very specific trade or skill. This is one of those targets that is quite difficult to measure. While there is information on enrollment rates in tertiary education, formal tertiary education, there's very little on non-formal training opportunities. Latest statistics in 2020 show that 41% of women and 36% of men have successfully completed tertiary education. But these numbers vary greatly, and that's simply an average. If you look at countries like Korea, Canada, Japan, and Russia, that percentage can go as high as 60%. But if you look at Sub-Saharan Africa, it can go as low to about 10%. Target 4.4. By 2030, substantially increase the number of youth and adults who have relevant skills, including technical and vocational skills, for employment, decent jobs, and entrepreneurship. This target may seem very similar to the previous one, but there's a huge focus on skills here, and there's a recognition that skills can be gained in ways outside of formal educational channels. It advocates for increasing and diversifying skills through a whole range of teaching and educational modalities. It also looks beyond work-specific skills, and focuses on high-level cognitive and non-cognitive and transferable skills such as problem-solving, critical thinking, creativity, teamwork, conflict resolution, and communication. These skills can be useful across a range of occupational fields. Interestingly, the only indicator for this particular target looks at ICT or information communication technology skills. And it measures it by looking at a range of things that we do on the computer every day, like copy, pasting, using email, using spreadsheets, making a presentation, as well as some more advanced skills like coding and understanding computer languages. There's very little data on this, and it is a pretty new area of measurement in the educational space. It's also insufficient because we know things like critical thinking and problem solving, it's hard to think about how those might be measured in a very quantifiable context. Target 4.5, by 2030, eliminate gender disparities in education and ensure equal access to all levels of education and vocational training for the vulnerable, including persons with disabilities, indigenous peoples, and children in vulnerable situations. This particular target really narrows in on the idea of equity and inclusion in education, specifically looking at disparities. Now, this has been brought up in other targets, but 4.5 really makes it explicit. And it says that everyone should have access to the same levels of education, regardless of gender, age, race, color, ethnicity, nationality, language, sexual orientation, religion, political or other opinion, or socioeconomic status. It calls special attention to people with disabilities, indigenous peoples, migrants, and other vulnerable groups, and recognizes that specific strategies may be needed to meet their needs. It also points out that women and girls may have additional and more difficult conditions in order to allow them to be able to take on school. Things like hygiene concerns, threats of child labor and marriage, more home duties, etc really impact girls, but a lot of progress has been made on making sure that girls have the same educational opportunities as boys, and in some regions and contexts, actually boys are more at risk. So it's really about that looking at very specific contexts to understand which groups are the most at risk. Now measuring this particular target is very similar and uses very similar indicators to all the other ones, the number of out-of-school children, literacy and numeracy rates, those types of 
of things, but the difference here is it uses a disaggregated data approach. Now, disaggregated data is when you take the full data set and then you narrow in on specific factors that may have an impact. This could be race, it could be gender, it could be income inequality, and it puts these groups in different quintiles and allows you to compare and contrast the data. Most of the disaggregated data that currently exists in the system is specifically related to gender, so pulling out girls versus boys. And what we see in that data is for every 100 boys out of school, there are 118 girls out of school. So as I mentioned, it does depend on the region, but overall there are more threats to women and girls getting education. Target 4.6. By 2030, ensure that all youth and a substantial proportion of adults, both men and women, achieve literacy and numeracy. Literacy is the ability to read and write, and numeracy is the ability to reason and apply basic numerical concepts. This particular target looks at functional literacy and numeracy, which is the level you would have after completing a basic education. Over the last 65 years, literacy and numeracy have increased approximately 4% every five years, going from 42% in 1960 to 86% in 2018. And that 86% is just adult literacy. If you look at youth literacy, it's actually all the way up to 92%. However, 617 million people worldwide still lack basic literacy and numerical skills. And 750 million people, two thirds of them women, are illiterate. And of those illiterate people, half of them live in South Asia and a quarter in Sub Saharan Africa. So, again, we see those disparities based on region. Target 4.7, by 2030, ensure that all learners acquire the knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development, including, among others, through education for sustainable development and sustainable lifestyles, human rights, gender equality, promotion of a culture of peace and nonviolence, global citizenship, and appreciation of cultural diversity and of culture's contribution to sustainable development. Target 4.7 is a really novel addition to the 2030 Agenda, and it recognizes that education must include information about sustainable development, citizenship, human rights, peace, and other topics. This is something that I think is so crucial, and it's why I do this channel, and it is nice to see it in the 2030 Agenda, and specifically, it's there to be able to prepare good global and local citizens who can tackle the challenges that we face. Unfortunately, there is no data on this type of thing, but it is looked at across all levels of where this type of information might be integrated. So whether that be at the national policy level, in school curriculums, in teachers' capacities, etc., that is how they're starting to think about how they might measure if this is being done. And finally, this goal has three means of implementation targets that focus on things like educational facilities, scholarships and funding for education education, and the workforce and teaching staff that support a good education system. Let's have a look at those. Target 4.A, build and upgrade education facilities that are child, disability, and gender sensitive, and provide safe, nonviolent, inclusive, and effective learning environments for all. 4B, by 2020, substantially expand globally the number of scholarships available to developing countries, in particular least developed countries, small island developing states, and African countries for enrollment in higher education, including vocational training and information and communications technology, technical, engineering, and scientific programs in developed and developing countries. Target 4C. By 2030, substantially increase the number of qualified teachers, including through international cooperation for teacher training in developing countries especially least developed countries and small island developing states. Okay, we made it through SDG 4, quality education. Let's summarize. Education is a crucial SDG because it enables upward socioeconomic mobility and is a key part of escaping poverty. SDG 4 focuses on multiple dimensions of education and lifelong learning. It specifically addresses access, equity, and quality education. Target 4.1 aims to ensure that all girls and boys have equitable access to free and quality primary and secondary education. This is measured not only by the number of children enrolled in school, but also by their literacy and numeracy rates. Today, we have approximately 258.4 million children out of school globally. In addition, 617 million, or 55% of children in primary and lower secondary education, lack minimum proficiency in reading and mathematics. 
Target 4.2 looks at pre-primary, which is education and development from birth to age five. The participation rate in early education is 69% globally, and seven out of 10 children are developmentally on track. Target 4.3 is focused on providing access to higher education, including post-secondary academic institutions, specific technical or vocational training, and more informal lifelong learning opportunities. Currently, 41% of women and 36% of men globally have attained formal tertiary education. Target 4.4 looks at skills development and recognizes that skills can be gained in a variety of ways, not simply through formal education channels. It advocates for increasing and diversifying learning opportunities by using a wide range of education and training modalities and encourages transversal skills such as problem solving, critical thinking, creativity, teamwork, communication skills, and conflict resolution which can be used across a wide range of occupational fields. Target 4.5 narrows in on issues of inclusion and equity in education and skills development, specifically looking at disparities. It calls special attention to the needs of people with disabilities, migrants, Indigenous people, and other vulnerable groups, and recognizes that targeted strategies may be required for them. Currently, 118 girls were out of school for every 100 boys, but good progress has been made on engaging women and girls in education. Target 4.6 looks at literacy and numeracy. Over the last 65 years, the global literacy rate has increased approximately 4% every five years, going from 42% in 1960 to 86% in 2018. Target 4.7 advocates for integrating sustainability, peace, human rights, and intercultural international understanding into education systems. SDG 4 also features three means of implementation targets which cover education facilities, scholarships, and teaching staff. And that's it. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for being here. And as always, I do create a blog post that has links to my research, additional resources where you can learn more, and one or two organizations who work in this field that you may choose to follow or support if you're interested in the topic. I do hope to be doing SDG 5 very soon, so don't forget to subscribe so you can follow along and see all the SDG goals. Also, if you learned something in this video, give it a like, it helps out the channel. That's it for now. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you in the next one, and until then, keep fighting the good fight. Bye!